Hi there, welcome back. Uh, Miss Johnson here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and heading to my channel. We are going to do Miss Johnson's Read Aloud Time and we're actually going to do a new story today. Um, I've chosen one that I think is um, a really beloved story. It's really interesting and powerful and meaningful and I really hope you like it. So we're going to be reading The One and Only Ivan. So looking at the cover, I see there's an elephant and there is a gorilla. So I'm thinking those are going to kind of be the focus, that's going to be kind of the focus of the story. It is by Catherine Applegate. And on the back, there's a little, uh, we, again, we call it a synopsis. A synopsis means it's um, a way to kind of entice you into reading the book to see if it's kind of the book for you. So I'm going to read that and then I'll talk about it for a little bit. So it says, Ivan is an easygoing gorilla. Living in a shopping mall, he has grown accustomed to humans watching him through the glass walls of his domain. He rarely misses his life in the jungle. In fact, he hardly ever thinks about it at all. Instead, Ivan thinks about TV shows he's seen, his friends Stella and Bob, and painting. Then he meets Ruby, a baby elephant taken from her family, and she makes Ivan see their home and his own art through new eyes. When Ruby arrives, uh, change comes with her, and it's up to Ivan to make it a change for the better. So going back to our cover, this is Ivan making a prediction right now. I think this is Ruby, um, a baby elephant, okay? Now, this story is so interesting because it's told from the point of view of Ivan. Ivan is the gorilla. So if I open up my story, there is kind of a dedication part. There are, um, the author writes kind of for somebody, and this is for Julia. And after the dedication for Julia, there's actually a quote. It's right here. And it says, it is never too late to be what you might have been. Um, and it's by George Eliot. Um, it's interesting because George Eliot is not actually a man. It is a woman. Her name is Mary Ann, uh, Mary Ann Evans. And she was a famous writer way, 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 way back in like the 1800s. And she actually used a name. She used a name, um, a man's name, when she was doing her writing because she thought there was a lot of stereotypes with women's uh, writing as they were publishing in that era. So I thought it was really interesting that um, Catherine Applegate kind of used her quote to start off her book. Very interesting. Um, the next page after that quote is something called a glossary, which is interesting that it's at the beginning of the book. Typically, when we see a glossary, a glossary has just a list of words with uh, quick little definitions about them. Usually, we see that at the end of a story or at the end of an informational text is typically what it's found in. This is not an informational text. It's a, um, it's a picture book. It's a, it's a story. It's, um, so, it's interesting. We're going to read the glossary right now. Chest beat is number one. Repeated slapping of the chest with one or both hands in order to generate a loud noise, a loud sound. Sometimes used by gorillas as a threat display to intimidate an opponent. Uh, the second word is domain, and that means territory. So domain means um, uh, where this, where they live. The grunt, snorting pig-like noises made by gorilla parents to express annoyance. Me ball, that's the next word. Dried excrement thrown at observers. Uh, nine. 9,855 days example. While gorillas in the wild typically gauge the passing of time based on seasons or food availability, Ivan has adopted a tally of days. 9,855 days is equal to 27 years. Hmm. Uh, not tag is um, a stuffed uh, toy gorilla. Silverback also less frequently gray boss, is an adult male over 12 years old with an area of silver along his back. The silverback is a figure of authority responsible for protecting his family. Uh, slimy chimp is slang and it's offensive, um, is a human. Refers to sweat on, on hairless skin. So slimy skin is the human. And the last one is called vining, uh, which is casual play, a reference to vine swinging. So it's important that the author, author took time to define these words because, like I said, the story is told from Ivan's point of view and um, he kind of uses different terms because he's a gorilla. 
So these are kind of the things that he's adopted into his vocabulary that we can sometimes go back and reference. So the last thing I'm going to talk about before we start reading is the way that the uh, story is set up. It looks like a humongous book, right? That looks like a lot to get through. But if you look at the pages, sometimes there's not a lot of words on each page. So if you notice on every single page or couple pages, what Ivan has done in his storytelling what Ivan has done in his storytelling is he kind of titles each page and then writes about it. So um, it's hard to do chapters with this story because there's no actual chapters. There's just uh, different pages of um, writing and it's kind of um, all toyed, it's all told from Ivan's point of view. So it'll be him kind of talking. So I'm going to read probably about 20 pages a day and we're going to get started with the one and only Ivan. Here we go. Just wanted to show this picture. Hello, I'm Ivan. I'm a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. Names. People call me the freeway gorilla, the ape at exit eight, the one and only Ivan, mighty silverback. The one and only Ivan. The names are mine, but they're not me. I am Ivan, just Ivan, only Ivan. Humans waste words. They toss them like banana peels and leave them to rot. Everyone knows the peels are the best part. I suppose you think gorillas can't stand, understand you. Of course, you would. Uh, you also probably think we can't walk upright. Try knuckle walking for an hour. You tell me which is more fun. Patience. I've learned to understand human words over the years, but understanding human speech is not the same as understanding humans. Humans speak too much. They chatter like chimps, crowding the world with their nose with their noise even when they have nothing to say. It took me some time to recognize all the human sounds, to weave words into things, but I was patient. Patient is a useful way to be when you're an ape. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. How I look. I used to be a wild gorilla and I still look the part. I have a gorilla's shy gaze, a gorilla's sly smile. I wear a snowy saddle of fur and uniform of a silverback. When the sun warms my back, I cast a gorilla's majestic shadow. In my human, in my size, humans see a test of themselves. They hear fighting words in the wind, and what I'm thinking is how the late day sun reminds me of a ripe nectarine. I'm mightier than any human, 400 pounds of pure power. My body looks made for battle. My arms outstretched span taller than the tallest human. My family tree spreads wide as well. I'm a great ape and you are a great and you are a great ape and so are chimpanzees and orangutans and bonogo, bon, bonobos. Um, all of us distant and distrustful cousins. I know this is troubling. To find it hard to believe there is a connection across the time and space linking me to a race of ill-mannered clowns. Chimps, there's no excuse for them. The Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. I live in a human habitat called the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. We are conveniently located off of I-95, which shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year. Mac says that when he answers the trilling phone, Mac works here at the mall. He is the boss. I work here too. I am the gorilla. At the Big Top Mall, a creaky music carousel spins all day and monkeys and parrots live amid the merchants. In the middle of the mall is a ring with benches where humans can sit on their rumps while they eat soft pretzel. The floor is covered with sawdust made of dead trees. My domain is one is at one end of the ring. I live here because I am too much gorilla and not enough human. So remember, domain is his habitat, so he lives in the domain. Stella's domain um, is next to mine. Stella is an elephant. She and Bob, who is a dog, are my dearest friends. At present, I do not have any gorilla friends. My domain is made of thick glass and rusty metal and rough cement. Stella's domain is made of metal bars. The sun, the sun bear's domain is wood. The parrot's is wire mesh. Three of my walls are glass. One of them is a cracked and small piece. One of them is cracked and a small piece 
about the size of my hand is missing from the bottom corner. I made the hole with a baseball bat Matt gave me for my sixth birthday. After that, he took away the bat and he let me keep the baseball that came with it. A jungle scene is painted on one of my domain walls. It has a waterfall about water without water and flowers without scent and trees without roots. I didn't paint it, but I enjoy the way those shapes uh, flow across the wall, even if it isn't much of a jungle. I'm lucky my domain has three windowed walls. I can see the whole mall and a bit of the world beyond. The frantic pinball machines, the pink billows of cotton candy, and the vast and treeless parking lot. Beyond the lot is a freeway where cars stampede without end. A giant sign at its edge beckons them to stop and rest like gazelles at a watering hole. The sign is faded and the color is bleeding, but I know what I say. Mac re I know what it says. Mac read its words out loud one day. Come to the exit, 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. Sadly, I cannot read, although I wish I could. Reading stories would be a fine way to fill my empty hours. Once, however, I was able to enjoy a book left in my domain by one of my keepers. It tasted like a termite. The freeway billboard had a drawing of Mac on his in his clown clothes and Stella on her hind legs in an angry smile with fierce eyes and unkept hair. That animal is supposed to be me, but the artist made a mistake. I am never angry. So that is the sign outside the mall. So there's Stella, there's Mac, two new characters, and that's supposed to be Ivan. But Ivan says that's not him because he does not get angry. Anger is precious. A silverback uses anger to maintain order and warns his troop of danger. When my father beat his Jess, it was to say, beware, listen, I am in charge. I am angry to protect you because that is what I was born to do. Here in my domain, there was no one to protect. So I'm going to only read about 10 pages for today because I did kind of an introduction. So let me know what you think. The story is really incredible. I think it's so interesting how Ivan um, talks and how he explains things in the human world that we live through every single day. And it's uh, told from his point of view. So we're getting the point of view of the gorilla, kind of what he sees and thinks. And thank you so much for tuning in. Come back next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.